Here we go. We got this right triangle right here. And x minus 4. X. Manny, I, I think you're supposed to be writing this down right now. There you go, Manny. Okay. Here's what it'll say. It'll say the the right triangle has sides x minus 4 and x. area is so it'll say show that x squared minus 44x minus 45 equals 0. Part B, we'll say, what's the perimeter? Should we do this one together? Yeah. I think let's do this one together. You're going to do the next one by yourself. Okay. Um, what do you know about right triangles? Yes, sir? The formula for what? For the what of the triangle? Ah. The formula for the area is? So base times height divided by 2. So 1 half. Length, same thing, right? So 1 half base times height is how you find the area. The area is 1 half base times height. Okay? And what is the area? Because it says in English right here. Right. Okay? So you know it's a triangle. You know it's a right triangle. You know that's the formula for the area of a right triangle you know that that's the area of this triangle. So, what do you, and you know you have to show this. So what could you do? Okay, but what, what do you think we should do? Stuck? No ideas? Oh, hmm. What's Daniel think? Man, you're just riding coattails waiting for somebody to tell us, huh? <laughs> Caitlin knows. Um, Can I give you guys a clue? You don't start with this. You don't start with this. You start with this. What do you think, Jasmine? So she's saying that you have to use this formula, so you say x times x minus 4 times 1 half, or she said it divided by 2, either way, equals 22.5. This, the thing I'm going to write right now is the hard part, and if you're just sitting there checked out and you write down the hard part, you're waste, you wasted ink, or pencil lead, whatever you're using, because it's like the whole thing we just talked about. How do you figure out what to do? That's the hard part. The hard part's not writing it down. Right, writing it down is easy. The area is 22.5. And that's equal to 1 half times x times x minus 4. That's the hard part right there. Everything else after that is easy. Really. So, oh, well, I don't know. So then after that, what? 
What do you think, Cyrus? So multiply these two things together. What about the one half? What can we do with that? Hey, check this out. Do you see how my what I need is x squared, not one half x squared? And do you also see this is 45? Do you see a 45 over here? But that's half of 45, isn't it? So what if I multiplied both sides by 2? Do you know why I'm multiplying both sides by 2? Because I need this to be 45. That's why I'm multiplying this by 2. You don't always know what steps you have to take. You have to kind of work with what you have to get this. All right. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. It gives me 45x squared minus 4x. Is that good? Yeah, Diego? So then just move that to the other side. So 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 45. So this is what's really cool. On a Cambridge test, this part we just did is usually worth 4 points. But if you fake it, you get 0. You don't start with this and then try to figure it out. You start with what you know, and you'd have to show all your work. And that's usually worth 4 points. Okay. Um, oh, boy. How can you find the perimeter of the triangle? Yeah. How did you get minus 4x from the x squared? From when I distributed this. That's x squared, and then that's minus 4x. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Wait, why did you multiply by 2 No. Well, yeah, I did, but what's 2 times 1 half? Right. Here's what, here's what people get confused by, is like when they see like 3 times x minus 5 times x plus 1, they want to distribute that 3 to everything. But if it was written like this, would you multiply 2 times 3 and 4 times 3? Of course not. And it's the same thing. You could multiply just one of them, either one, it doesn't matter, by 3. Same thing here. We're going to multiply everything by 2, but you don't multiply this by 2, and that by 2, and that by 2. It's the whole thing. It's one number. Yeah or no? Okay. All right. How are we going to find the perimeter? What are we going to have to do? Okay, so to find perimeter, like we have to add this side plus this side plus that side. That's true. That's very good. Okay, yes ma'am. So we, ha we don't know this. That's true. Have to find the hypotenuse. Okay, that's good too. Oh boy. You guys see what they're saying? Like perimeters, like all the sides added up. And we don't know what this is. I don't know. How can you find, well yes sir. Y squared, what are you talking about? Uh huh. So because it's a right, right triangle, you know that this is true. A squared plus B squared is C squared, and C squared is the hypotenuse. Oh. So that's how we're going to find the hypotenuse, is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. That's true. That's very good. OK. Yeah, Manny. Manny, see, the reason I'm not giving up on you is because of stuff like that. He said the most obvious thing that, that nobody said yet. The most important thing is we can't do this until we know what this equals. Do you see that? How can we find out what that equals? You have to solve this for x. Oh. Wait, the hard part is what he said. The easy part is solving for x. If the instructions said solve for x, no problem. Everybody passes. Easy. The hard part is you have to solve for x, but it doesn't tell you to. That's the hard part. So what Manny realized, and I know that other people realized it too, they just didn't say it. What Manny realized and what he said is that we can't use this until I first know what the two sides are. The way I'm going to find out what the two sides are is by solving this. 
you see? So how can you solve that? Hey Zeus, what can we do to solve that? What's that? Wait, what did you say? Yeah, that's the same thing. You're going to find the x-intercepts. And how are you going to do that? Definitely not. You never, you're not using inverse operations for this kind of a quadratic. Leslie, what are we going to do? Um, we could. If you have a quadratic, you can always use a quadratic formula. However, there's something you need to check first. What is it, Bridget? What do we have to check first? Absolutely right. We have to see if it's factorable. I know that's what you were going to say, right? You were going to say, is it factorable? And holy moly guacamole, it's factorable. Huh? You guys are freaking me out. Emily, is that equal to the, because this is a four, right? Because it was a 4 right here, right? And it was a 4 right there, and it's a 4 right there. That's still a 4, right? Even if it kind of looked like a 9? <laughs> but it's still a 4, right? Okay. Is this true? Yes. So what is x equal? 9. 9 and Okay. Which one do we need? 9. Why not this one? Because this cannot be negative 5. Right. Okay, what are the two sides? 9. 9? And five. Isn't that weird? I wonder if it always works that way. That's kind of weird. Opposite sign. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try to do a shortcut like that. But yeah, it's five. Okay. So now, can you figure out the hypotenuse? Yes. How? So you're going to use this, right? So you're going to have c equals the square root of veinte five plus ochenta one. Is that true? George, I just solved for C. Yeah. And what is that, 106? Yeah. That sucks. Square root 106, 10.3. So what's the perimeter? 24.3. Uh, you guys agree? How did you get the perimeter was 24.3? 9 plus 5 plus, plus 10.3. So 24.3. Is that what you said? 24.3. So one second, Michelle. We'll get to your questions in just a second, okay? Here's the thing I want you to know about how this is graded. Um, this next part right here is usually worth 3 points when it's factorable. That's 7 total points so far. This part right here would be worth another two, and this would probably be worth a number, another two. And then your final answer would be worth one more point. So all told, this would be seven, 11, 12 point problem. Um, it would be a paper two problem. Well, it might be a paper three problem because of this. But either way, um, on the paper two, they're only worth 70 points. This would be a huge chunk of it. Yeah. Well, questions? Why are you throwing stuff? Oh, it's just part of the racing. Yeah, it's still stuff. No. I need to do a fundraiser for a document camera because this one, these suck. That's the same one she has. Yeah, I know they're awful. I hate them. She, you know those like, like those donate for outside like, uh -huh. Yeah, she created one of those. Yeah. Saying you're the best student she's ever worked with. Oh wow. She wants to be able to. See, I choose. I get. I just try to charge students ten dollars for help, and it's not working out. No answer. <sighs>